Oh, oh. That fool door finally gave way and the man burst into the room. Oh. He stopped and stared at me for a few seconds before charging directly at me. Oh, oh, oh. The man got a hold of me. I couldn't move. He had me pinned down and pushed up on me. He kicked and screamed and wailed like a psycho, crying out for help, hoping one of my neighbors would hear me. Several minutes felt like hours. I couldn't do anything to stop him. I was eventually able to break free from the man's grasp as he took off running out of my condo. As soon as he was gone, I immediately jumped up and shut the broken door behind me. I then called the police. Welcome to Horror Story Party. Did y'all really want to know what happened to Little Caesar Pizza? Like, the terrible, the bad, like, what really go on in Little Caesar? Then watch the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification so you won't miss another update when I post and or music. And subscribe. Always subscribe and give this a like. Never forget to give this a like. This is the uh, like third, I think, the, yeah, third time watching this show. Uh, third time watching the world show. Boy, the warring. The lip. The whole fine the lip. I still Wait, we even start. What, what is different about the horrifying delivery? Like, all you're doing is driving to, to deliver the pizza. And then, then you give him a smile, wait for the chain, stuff like that. So, what is the difference between a nice guy delivering to a mean one? Like, I don't get it. Cause it's in a horrifying delivery. It, like, is it so bad that when you got your pizza, the delivery driver was so mean to you or something? But, it, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Remember what happened like it was yesterday. It was back in the mid-2000s. I was 22 at the time. I'm not even sure why I'm talking about it now. Maybe if I tell the story, then it'll stop haunting me. I was still a college student back then. I rented a one-bedroom condo near campus. It was super small, but the low rent allowed me to live by myself. I preferred to live alone. I didn't have to share anything with anyone. And I had my own privacy and space. There wasn't much variety in my life in those days. I would go to class, and then I would go home to study or just hang out. Sometimes I would go out with friends, but usually I was just home alone. One Friday night, I was at home study. It was still fairly early. 8.01 p.m. I had only just started working. I then heard a knock at the door. I wasn't expecting anyone, but I got up and headed over to the door. When I looked through the peephole, I saw a Little Caesars pizza guy standing outside. It was some frail older looking guy, probably in his mid-40s. Hello? Pizza delivery! I knew I didn't order anything. I opened the door and told the guy he had the wrong house. He apologized and laughed. You don't want no pizza? So why why he had your own door? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's free pizza. Free pizza. Looks better than free pizza. Lots of things. In the uncensored uh, story, that like you're stealing somebody else's food. But, and not stealing if they don't know. Right? Right? And not stealing if they didn't know that the delivery guy messed up. Wrapped it off as some silly okay. mistake. <laughs> then he walked away. The whole situation seemed slightly off. I didn't know oh, why, but I was glad to wow. be back to study. 3.28 a.m. I was still up and studying. I was starting to feel really tired, but I wanted to keep working for a bit longer. One hour later! What the hell? I was extremely freaked out at someone being at my condo at this time of night. As I walked to the door, I felt more and more uneasy. I couldn't think of a single reason that someone would knock on my door at 3.28 a.m. It was way too creepy. That was the first time I wished I didn't live alone. I got to the door and cautiously looked through the peephole, only to see the same guy from before. 
I was freaked the hell out. He was just standing there holding a pizza. I didn't know if I should say anything or just ignore him. But before I could make up my mind, he started yelling through the door. I know you're in there. I know you ordered this pizza. Come out and pay for it. I was scared shitless. Hold on. Nah, nah, you, 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 you probably, you probably got the wrong pizza. Like, did, did you look, check the ticket? Like, did you check the ticket to make sure that you, that, that was the right number? Did you, uh, ask your manager or one of your coworkers and ask them, hey, is this really the right pizza? If I'm going to the right house, did you check on your, um, your computer and, and thing to make sure that you're going to the right, uh, house or apartment? Because at this point, you're, you're, you're being insane and crazy at this point. Confused. I thought maybe someone was playing a joke on me in order to pizza to my condo. But why the hell would the pizza guy still be around? 3.28 a.m. He continued to yell about how I had to pay for the pizza. I, I just wanted him to leave. What? I started shouting back at him through the closed door. Leave me alone. I didn't why order anything. Don't your, mess around with me. Here. You owe me money. The guy was starting to sound really angry now, and I got even more scared. He had to be some sort of psycho. Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops! You gotta be a prank. You piece of shit! The man over? started banging on the door. He was banging his fist against it so hard that it was rattling its frame. I started screaming for help, terrified out of my mind. I tried to open my phone, but I couldn't remember why I left it. The door started shaking even more, and I realized the man was flinging his whole body against it. He was trying to break it down now. At that point, I completely lost it. I was practically having a panic attack and screaming my lungs out. The door banged and shook more and more as the man continued to throw himself into it. I was petrified and even pleaded for the man to stop, but he wouldn't. I had never been more frightened. I felt frozen to the spot. All I wanted to do was run away, but I couldn't budge. Oh, 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 That's when the door finally gave way and the man burst into the room. He stopped and stared at me for a few seconds before charging directly at me. Oh, oh, oh. The man got a hold of me. I couldn't move. He had me pinned down and pushed up on me. He kicked and screamed and wailed like a psycho, crying out for help, hoping one of my neighbors would hear me. Several minutes felt like hours. I couldn't do anything to stop him. I was eventually able to break free from the man's grasp as he took off running out of my condo. As soon as he was gone, I immediately jumped up and shut the broken door behind me. I then called the police. After reviewing the condo surveillance footage, they were able to identify the man. He was later identified as a man named Caesar Lucas, who was then arrested back at his apartment. The police informed me that the man was a former Little Caesars pizza delivery guy. He used to deliver a lot of pizzas to my neighbors and had a- Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So he used an old uniform, right? He used an old uniform, took the pizza, and... Wow! While Patchy pulls himself together, let's see how SpongeBob's party is shaping up. A woman was attacked after a suspect brought a pizza to her apartment. Prosecutors say a man admitted to the assault after delivering pizza to one of her neighbors. A man named Caesar Lucas pleaded guilty to the charges. Prosecutors say the man got into the victim's nearby apartment while she was asleep prior to the assault. But what makes this case more disturbing was that he even pleaded guilty to multiple burglaries and assaults, multiple? targeting and breaking into women's houses after making Little Caesars pizza. Holy, holy, you, 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 the, why are you? <laughs> and this really happened. <sighs> deliveries and scoping out the neighborhood. Y'all, this is insane. I never expect someone to go this way. <laughs> This happened several years ago, back when I was in my late teens. I'm still scarred by it. I was working at a local Little Caesars pizza shop. It was a pretty small neighborhood, but there weren't a ton of other restaurants close by. 
so we got decent business. There weren't many employees though, so I was always really busy. The most I ever worked with were one or two part-time guys, but usually I was by myself in whatever position I was working. It made slow days really boring, since I had no one to talk to. My tasks ranged from taking calls and orders to making pizza, but I was usually the one delivering the pizzas. I didn't mind it much. At least I could listen to whatever music I wanted in the car. One day I had been at work for several hours already, and it had been incredibly slow. I was on delivery again, and I'd only taken one order so far. I was getting really bored, so I was happy when the phone finally rang. I answered it and heard some guy on the other end. He was a little strange right off the bat. He wanted to order a pizza, but he sounded kind of off somehow. His voice was gaunt and emotionless, almost robotic, but very... He sounded like he had to be in his 40s. Everything seemed fine though, and he placed his order without any difficulties. I had just finished writing it down, when I suddenly heard what sounded like a woman screaming in the background. Then there was a glitching sound and the call ended. I was confused and a little creeped out, but I figured it was just... just a messed up connection or something. After making the guy's pizza, I headed out to deliver it. It was pretty late at night by that point. I always felt uneasy being out alone at that time. I felt like something was going to happen, but eventually I made it to the house. There were no street lamps around to help either. The only light came from my delivery car. I felt really uncomfortable going up to a house in total darkness, but I didn't really have any other options. I got out of the car and slowly walked up to the house. It felt like it took a lot longer than it actually did. The steps creaked beneath my feet as I approached the front door. I really didn't want to be there. It was too creepy. Man, why can't this guy live in a normal neighborhood? I knocked on the door and waited. There was no answer. I knocked several more times and there was still nothing. Hello, pizza delivery? Nobody came to the door. Standing on some stranger's porch was not how I wanted to spend my night. I knew that I'd get in trouble if I didn't deliver the pizza though, so I had no choice but to wait. Several minutes went by and still nothing happened. I kept banging on the door, figuring the guy must have gone to bed or something. I started to think that the whole thing was a prank. Uh, hello, anybody home? Pizza's here! I finally gave up and decided to head back to the store. Then, just as I was about to leave, I glanced at the window on my left and saw something terrifying. There was this creepy ass face pressed up against the glass, smiling at me like a psycho. I dropped the pizza on the porch and then backed away from the door. The face watched me for a second and disappeared from view. Then, the door suddenly burst open and the man from the window came running out. I screamed again and ran like hell back to my car. The man then followed me. I jumped in as fast as I could and just managed to pull away before he got to me. As I sped off, I looked in the rearview mirror and saw the scariest looking man standing in the road. He was smiling as he watched me leave. I was absolutely terrified. I drove back to the store, speeding the entire way. I didn't know what that guy wanted with me, but I knew it had to be something bad. I'd never seen someone smile like that before. As soon as I got back to the store, I explained the whole situation to my manager. I told him he could take the payment for the pizza out of my paycheck. Weeks later, it was reported on the news that a girl that had been missing was recently found. She had apparently been kidnapped for days and had finally managed to escape captivity. the girl is a a girl was missing kidnapped, right? And found she been gone for 28 years. Year girl got kidnapped, found after days. Wait, who? Oh. Hello, it was creepy. Yeah, he he should go to jail. This girl is twenty year, twenty eight year, years, year old, and she went gone for twenty eight years. Twenty eight years. In twenty eight years. Activity. She was completely hysterical when they found her, but she eventually told the police that her captor had ordered pizza and that she could recognize the delivery man. Apparently, the same creepy guy that had delivered the pizza to was the woman's kidnapper. 
I gave the police his address and he was arrested shortly after. The man was later revealed to be a man named David Cruz. He had been convicted of kidnapping, false imprisonment, and several other charges. It turns out that my encounter had saved the girl's life. She was able to get away while the man was preoccupied with me. I've been traumatized ever since. I eventually had to quit the job at Little Caesars because I couldn't go out on deliveries anymore. It was like I was reliving it every time I got in that car. That smile is still burned in my memory. I don't think I'll ever forget it. On June 10th, the description of a house and a pepperoni pizza delivery from Little Caesars provided by a girl kidnapped from her home led to her alleged abductor's arrest. Authorities said the suspect, identified as David Montiel Cruz, faces nine counts of charges. The girl was abducted after she returned home from school. After being released, police said it was the girl herself who gave the necessary information to locate the house where she was held. And her memory of the suspect ordering a pepperoni pizza from Little Caesars allowed them to track down the suspect. Don't tell me why you did what you did. Little Caesar's Pizza is my life. I'll settle for everything more and never anything less. There's just something about the cheese and the toppings that makes competitors like Pizza Hut and Papa John's pale in comparison. I used to be well known in my local Little Caesar's franchise. I'm a pretty big guy, so I mean it when I say they could see me coming from a mile away. My car leaned to one side, too but there was a day when I could still hey, squeeze in through the door. Leaving. The employees would have my extra-large pepperoni hot and ready for me and right when I got up to the counter. The Most times, I couldn't even wait until I got home to eat. So I would sit down at one of the few tables they had for inside seating and devour the whole thing in a matter of minutes. Of course, afterwards, I was still hungry. I know for that they may eat for um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, right when it hit... Me say, right when he hit 12 o'clock midnight, that man already ready, ready for him a pizza. Right when he hit 12 o'clock midnight, he ready to get that pizza. Right, right when he hit 12 o'clock midnight, 12 o'clock, he already zooming. Like, he zooming for that pizza. And then when he get part like 4 o'clock in the afternoon, he ready for another on slice. And then when it comes to like 8.01 p.m. He ready for another one. But like that like, bro, little season not, not that good. Eating pizza every day, all day with no nutritional balance. Man, you gonna die old piece. And I was right there at the source of the pizza. So I couldn't help myself from ordering another. They usually didn't have a problem. I was a big tipper when I still had my old job. Unfortunately, there was this one guy that had a bone to pick with me. I don't know why. He would always try to deny me my second or third pizza when there was no good reason, and it got on my nerves like nobody's business. I'm still ashamed to admit it, but one it day, like, I lost bro, control. They just gave you a pizza, uh, I'd like another extra one, large pepperoni pizza, ready. please. Sorry, sir, but we're out. Out? Out of what? We're out of pepperoni, sir. Okay, then just give me an extra large cheese. We're out of that, too. What? How is that possible? We're completely out of dough because of you. This is your tenth time coming this day. Just hey, shut up and give me my pizza, you hey, piece of shit! <laughs> hey, put him down! Ever since that day, I never went back to that location. However, I still order delivery from it all the time. But sometimes I order from the other store across town. Whenever I call in and that one guy answers the phone, he recognizes my voice and refuses to take my order. But when I need my Little Caesar's pizza, nothing can stop me. Or maybe a doorway can stop me. I've been having a lot of trouble with those recently. Being stuck in my couch eating pizza all day every day has definitely had an effect on my waistline. I'm almost certain I can't fit through the door to a physical Little Caesars location anymore. I've spiraled out of control in the last couple of years. I was too ashamed to go outside my house after what I did, and that only made things worse. All I do is sit in my house and eat Little Caesars pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I wish I could bring myself to eat something else, but at this point I'm addicted. Sometimes I eat the pizza hot dog style. Sometimes I eat it hamburger style. And when I'm really bored, I eat it like a burrito. I have to keep things interesting. The friends I have on Xbox say I'm obsessed, but I don't let them sway me. I'm the immovable object. I'm stuck in my ways. More than that, I'm stuck in my couch, quite literally. I busted out all the doorways in my house so I can get through them. 
But even then, I found that my bed is a bit too small for me to sleep on. I'm much more comfortable sleeping on the couch. That's where the Xbox is, and it's also where I stack my pizza boxes and afford around me. I take pride in the fact that I'm probably the biggest reason that Little Caesars is a competitor to the other pizza places in my area. However, things really started getting bad when I lost my job. I couldn't get into my car anymore, no matter how much I tried. Besides that, the simple act of walking has become extremely difficult. It's like I have thousand pound dumbbells strapped to my arms and legs. No longer so in any condition to work. So I live off government so benefits and my money goes to two things. Rent and Little Caesars Pizza, delivered straight to my couch. The hardest thing I do is my weekly bath. I don't fit in the tub anymore. So I have to go into the shower and pull the garden hose in. Then do my best to spray myself down after getting into all my crevices with a soapy sponge. I feel like I'm in a car. That's the reason why when you watch that 600 pound life, and they all go and blame their um, um, brother or blame their dad or no, 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 no. Let me see. You, it, it like, and, and the great part about it, they say they use fool to comfort discretion in their life. But you can't use fool to comfort the stress. Fool is not the only reason to comfort stress. Just like, you like drugs and smoking are not the only way to comfort your uh your depression and your downfall of your parents breaking up and stuff like bro don't eat don't smoke don't even drink because the all if you keep on eating so much food at a young age and you keep on getting thick of eating 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 all the time you gonna end up dead dying and you can't um know how to stop yourself or how to eat and eat Good food and healthy food, then you're gonna end up dead. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like I'm as big as a car. Recently, something even more life changing happened. I was stuck in my couch eating Little Caesar's pizza when I noticed something really didn't taste right in a bad way. Of course, like the fiend I am, I ate it all anyway. I couldn't stop myself. The bad your taste went on for a couple days, stop. and then I eventually yeah, started to feel sick, really man. sick. I, I got so weak that I couldn't move from the couch, and at the same yeah, time, I was right. vomiting profusely everywhere. It was like a giant fountain. I started to flood my own home with a lake full of vomit. Ugh. I felt like I was drowning in my own pee. If it had gone on any longer, I could have started floating in. Thankfully, I managed to get my phone and call an ambulance. The poor medics had a hard time getting me out of the house. Whatever was poisoning me had made me even more bloated than I had ever been, so they had to get the fire department to knock out the walls around my back door. Then, they wheeled me out of the garage on a specialized heavy-duty stretcher. I was in the hospital for weeks with a severe case of food poisoning. None of the doctors thought I would make it given my pre-existing condition. Luckily, I survived to file a report on the Little Caesars location I got the pizza from. I didn't want to do that to them, but I felt obligated to protect the public. Lo and behold, the health inspector found rat droppings in the dough. What makes me feel even worse is the guy I assaulted all those years ago was intentionally putting the crap in my pizzas to get back at me. He never faced any serious repercussions, but the restaurant shut down. Now I have to go hungry being stuck on my couch for another 20 minutes every time I order Little Caesars pizza. And no matter how hard I try to forget, it just isn't the same. The story was inspired by an incident that happened with the Little Caesars Pizza Restaurant. A man named Jonathan McNeil got a pizza with an extra unwanted topping. He said he picked up his pizza at an Indianapolis Little Caesars and soon discovered a disgusting sight. Him and his girlfriend found mice droppings baked into the pizza they ordered. McNeil took pictures of the pizza and posted them to his Facebook. Here's an image of it below. McNeil also returned to the restaurant demanding an explanation, but said he never got one. McNeil then called the health department, and a restaurant mentioned that they did indeed find rodent droppings, and immediately shut the restaurant down. According to the reports, the restaurant had been dealing with mice since last summer. Well, there y'all are uh, God. Now y'all know the three terrible, horrifying little Caesar pizza. Like, subscribe, and hit that post notification bell. And click on this icon to see more of my video of LGBTQ music, or you can click on this to see another video.